thank all the dignitaries. Now we shall start the felicitation of our respected dignitaries. Good morning, everyone. Respected delegates, participants, students, professors, Today is a special privilege for me to address this audience. It was around nine years ago when I myself was a law student that we had Justice Chandrachud, who was the then sitting judge of the Bombay High Court, come and address us at our college after a similar moot court competition. And there is one thing that he said that still reverberates in my mind. What he said was that no matter how many years you spend in the practice, no matter, matter what you achieve, law as a subject will always be a profession and can never become a business. The skill set the knowledge base which you acquire and develop over the years will be your raw material which will always be there for you throughout your years of practice. And as I stand here before you, I can tell you with conviction that there is no better way to manifest the spirit of the legal profession than an initiative like this which promotes advocacy, moot court competitions, which are like practical training for your years ahead in the profession. And if we see 10 years, 15 years down the line, I am certain that it will be you who will be on this side of the stage addressing law students, sharing your experiences, egging them on, motivating them, to take their career further. And it will be your professors and your teachers who will proudly look at the senior advocates and the senior partners that have become of you. For all the participants here today, I can tell you one thing for certain, that whatever happens from here on end, each of you are winners in their own right that you are few who represent many, that when you speak, you speak on behalf of your institutions and your colleges. Your voices are the voices of your institutions and your colleges. And I would like to congratulate each one of you for having come so far and having achieved whatever you have achieved so far. And I would like to wish you all the very best for the tournament which we are looking for. Today, we've gathered here to affirm the greatness of our noble profession. And even as we speak, we share an abiding belief in the prospects of tomorrow. And let me tell you, in a fair country like India, your name is not a criteria for success. And in a transparent country where we flourish, you don't have to be anyone's son or daughter to achieve your full potential. And we know deep in our bones that it is through toil and hard work that we will achieve professional success. Our resolve as lawyers does not lie in the decor of our grand offices of our law firms, or the fancy retainer packages that we pay our fresher associates, or the billing rates that we charge our clients, our resolve lies in a simple premise, summed up in a system of core values. These are the fundamental non-derogable values which will there be with, there with you for time immemorial, that amongst integrity, perseverance, and excellence 
our values which define us. Talking of integrity, they say that the only worldly possession you will finally have is your personal integrity. I recollect an interview by the former Chief Justice of India, Justice Kaparia, when he retired. He said that when he joined the profession of law, he came from a poor family. He was a class four employee. And the only personal asset that he had was his personal integrity. And today, people like Justice Kaparia have come to be associated with the judicial integrity that we see in our system. Talking of perseverance, they say that a man can change himself and master his own destiny is the conclusion of every mind which is awake to the power of the right thought. Form crystal clear goals. Pursue them with conviction. There will be impediments, there will be obstacles. But that does not mean that you take your eyes off the goal. Do not be afraid to do something which is unconventional. Do not be afraid to deviate from the norm. For instance, if someone is interested in the practice of IPR, copyrights, patents, or something to do with divorce law and family law, now that may not be the strictly the norm, but that is something which you are interested in. That may be your calling. And if that is your calling, then you are bound to do well because you will pursue that with conviction. Talking of excellence, I remember that when I joined the profession of law, a very senior advocate from Bombay High Court told me that in the practice of law and advocacy, failure to prepare is like preparing to fail. He told me the story of his grandfather who was a businessman in Nausari, who came to Bombay, set up his business, was successful. He had a couple of flats in Bombay. And when one of his friends came down to Bombay, was looking for an accommodation, he graciously offered one of his flats to his friend. Now four or five years down the line, when he himself required that flat, he graciously asked his friend to vacate. But that was not to be. And a court case was filed. His grandfather was confident. He said that I am with the right. I have done nothing wrong. This is my flat. What can happen? Unfortunately, when the result was out, he was made to pay a huge compensation to this particular fellow who was nothing more than a trespasser. Now, what Mr. Modi tells me is that from that day and 40 to 50 years he has spent in the profession of law. He's never seen divine intervention in the courtroom. Your success or failure as a lawyer will depend on your level of preparedness and your advocacy that you put forth. There is no room for complacency in a competitive environment. When you pass out when you graduate, you will have broadly two choices of professional practice. There are the preventive lawyers and there are the curative lawyers. The preventive lawyers are basically transactional lawyers. They draw up agreements. They try and build them up as strong as possible to avoid any possibility of future disputes. And in case they do go into disputes, it will increase the chances of your success in that dispute. Then we have the curative lawyers, which are basically the litigating lawyers, the advocates who appear before courts. When things go wrong, you need the curative lawyers to come to your aid. Now, when you make this career choice, it has to be a long-term choice, something which is your calling, something which you are really interested in, because that will define how your career will progress 
for the rest of the time. And these choices can never be made on short-term motives and short-term objects. Money can never be an end in itself, should not ever be an end in itself for an ambitious lawyer. It is professional excellence which will drive you on to achieve what you have to achieve. And money is a byproduct. It will always be directly proportional to your success in the law firm and the law, in the law field. As they say, the only difference between a grand theft and legal fees is a law degree. So money will always be there. But it can never become the final object or the final determining factor based on which you will decide your career choice. In a legal ecosystem, the various segments, the various participants, and each of this, these participants have a role to play. Be it a law student who practices for a moot court competition, or be it a law professor who inculcates values in these students who will be the future of this country, or be it a fresher at a law firm who burns the midnight oil to achieve professional success, or be it a senior advocate who practices, who prepares to present his case before the court the next day, or be it a Supreme Court or a High Court judge who writes a judgment knowing that it will impact the lives of hundreds and thousands of people to come. Each of these individuals is an integral part of this legal ecosystem, is an important contributory to this legal system, and therefore it is important for us to understand what role each of us plays in the continued development of this legal ecosystem. We are here to participate in this moot court competition. And let me tell you that when you argue before a court or a tribunal of judges, you will argue with belief and conviction and confidence. Confidence in your arguments is what is going to propel you about the others. And this confidence will come in from the hours and hours of efforts that you have put in, the reserve knowledge that you have built in, your ability to answer in questions, and your focus and your determination to come out successful. Now, I visited the Jagannath temple in Puri. And every evening, they have a tradition of flag hoisting, where an individual goes up right up on the dome, around 300 feet, and hoists the flag. Now, when he goes up 300 feet, there is no harness, there is no safety equipment, and all that he has is the belief and the faith which propels him. He does not harbor an iota of doubt. He is in that zone when nothing can go wrong. And this tradition which has been followed for hundreds of years, there has never been a single mishap. In the very same way, when you argue, you have to be in that zone where in those 20 or 30 minutes, you are at your optimal best that you will have the confidence to face anything which comes your way. You do not harbor an iota of doubt in your ability, and you put forth the best possible that you can ever do. And you will see the difference when you are in that zone, when you train your mind to do that, you will see the output of your efforts. As the Chinese saying goes, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Let us take this fundamental first step into the right direction. And these steps put together can become a giant leap for, this, for your career. 
Who says the sky is the limit when there are footsteps on the moon? With this, I would like to wish all of you all the very best for the competition. May you compete, may you outwit, and may you outlast each other. May the best team succeed. Thank you very much.